Good morning, Year 3. I hope you have all had a lovely weekend. And if you celebrated V Day on Friday, I hope you all had an amazing time. Right then, today we are going to be reading Chapter 12 of Gangster Granny, The Love Bomb. Ben had spent the whole of Sunday morning being measured up by Mum for his dance outfit. She had stayed up through the night sketching possible designs. Under duress, he was forced to choose one and pointed a limp finger at the one that he thought was the least hideous. Mum's hand-drawn options ranged all the way from the embarrassing to the humiliating. There was... The Woodland Fruit Cocktail Thunder and Lightning Accident and Emergency Ice and the Slice The Hedgerow and Badger The Quality Street Eggs and Bacon Confetti The Underwater World Burning Love Cheese and Pickle The Solar System Piano Man But the one that Ben thought was the least worst was the Love Bomb. We will have to find you a nice young girl to partner with for the competition, said Mum excitedly as she accidentally ran one of her fake nails under the sewing machine and it exploded. Ben hadn't thought about dance partners. Not only was he going to have to dance, he was going to have to dance with a girl. And not just any girl, but a revoltingly precocious, sparkly, fake tanned, leotard wearing, over made up one. Ben was still at the age when he thought girls were as appealing as frogs born. Oh, I'm just going to dance on my own, he spluttered. A solo piece, exclaimed Mum. How original. In fact, I can't stand here talking all day. I'd better go and practice, said Ben as he disappeared upstairs to his room. He shut the door, turned on his radio and then climbed out of the window and raced over to Granny's bungalow on his bike. So, you were running off into the woods when Lord Davenport started shooting at you. Ben was eagerly prompting his granny. But for the moment her mind looked blank. Was I? said Granny, looking increasingly befuddled. That's where the story ended last night. You said you had snatched the ring from the Davenport's bedroom and were running across the lawn where you heard shots. Oh, yes, yes, muttered Granny, her face suddenly illuminated. Ben smiled broadly. He suddenly remembered how he had used to love his granny telling stories when he was younger, transporting him to a magical world. A world where you paint pictures in your mind that are more thrilling than all the movies or TV shows or video games in the universe. Only a couple of weeks ago he had pretended to be asleep to stop her telling him a bedtime story. Clearly he'd forgotten how thrilling stories could be. I was running and running, continued Granny breathlessly, as if she was actually running, and I heard a shot ring out. Then another. I knew from the sound that it was definitely a shotgun rather than a rifle. What's the difference? asked Ben. Well, a rifle shoots one bullet and is more accurate, but a shotgun sprays hundreds of little deadly balls of lead. Any idiot can hit you if they fire a shotgun in your direction. And did he? said Ben. His smile had faded now. He was genuinely worried. Yes, but luckily I was far away by then, so I was only grazed. I could hear the dogs barking too. They were hunting me, and I was only a small girl. If they had caught me, the hounds would have ripped me to shreds. Ben gasped in horror. So how did you get away? he asked. I took a chance. I couldn't outrun the dogs through the forest. The fastest runner in the world couldn't, but I knew the woods really well. I used to play in them for hours with my brothers and sisters. I knew if I could get just across the stream, then the dogs would lose the scent. How come? Dogs can't follow a scent across water, and there was a great oak tree just on the other side of the stream. If I climb that tree, I might be safe. Ben couldn't imagine his granny climbing stairs, let alone a tree. She had lived in her bungalow ever since he could remember. More shots rang out through the darkness as I ran towards the stream, continued the old lady, and I stumbled in the gloom of the forest. I tripped on a tree root and fell face first in the mud. Scrambling to my feet, 
I turned round to see an army of men on horseback, led by Lord Davenport. They were carrying flaming torches and holding shotguns. The whole forest was lit up with fire from the torches. I jumped into the stream. It was around this time of year, in the depth of winter, and the water was icy. The cold shocked me, and I could hardly breathe. I clapped my hand over my mouth to stifle a scream. I could hear the dogs getting nearer and nearer, barking and barking. There must have been dozens of them. I looked behind me, and I could see their sharp teeth gleaming in the moonlight. So, I waded across the stream and started climbing the tree. My hands were muddy and my legs and feet were wet, and I kept sliding down the trunk. I frantically rubbed my hands on my nightshirt and began to climb again. I scrambled to the very top of the tree and stayed as still as I could. I heard the dogs and the army of Davenport's men follow the stream down to a different part of the forest. The dogs' ferocious barks became distant, and after a while the torches were just specks in the distance. I was safe. I shivered up that tree for hours. I waited until dawn, slid down the tree and made my way back to our cottage. I crept into bed and lay there for a few moments before the sun rose. Ben could picture everything she described perfectly in his mind. Granny had him utterly spellbound. Did they come looking for you? he asked. Well, no one got a good enough look at me, so Davenport had his men search everywhere in the village. Every cottage was turned upside down to look for the ring. Didn't you say anything? I wanted to. I felt so guilty, but I knew if I owned up I would be in deep trouble. Lord Davenport would have had me publicly flogged in the village square. So what did you do? I swallowed it. Ben couldn't believe his ears. The ring, Granny. You swallowed the ring. I thought it was the best way to hide it in my stomach. A few days later, it came out when I went to the toilet. That must have been painful, said Ben, his bum wincing at the thought. Passing a big diamond ring out of his bottom didn't sound in any way enjoyable. It was painful, excruciating, in fact, Granny grimaced. The good thing was that our cottage had been searched already from top to bottom. Not my bottom. The bottom of the cottage, I mean. Ben chuckled. And Davenport's men had moved on to searching the next village. So one night I went off into the woods and hid the ring. I placed it where no one would ever look, under a rock in the stream. Clever, said Ben. But that ring was only the first of many, Ben. Stealing it had been the biggest thrill of my life, and as I lay in bed each night, all I dreamed about was stealing more and more diamonds. That ring was just the beginning, continued Granny in a low whisper, staring deep into Ben's innocent young eyes of a lifetime of crime. Okay then, so, your task today is you are going to write a descriptive piece of writing about what happened to Granny and how she felt as she was running away from Lord and Lady Davenport's house. Okay, so your steps to success here are here and an adverb sheet to help you today. But we'll go through these in a moment. Okay then. So descriptive writing is going to be a type of writing that is meant to describe a person, place or event in great detail. And that's going to be really important today. The great detail. Okay then. So... While you are um, watching this video, if you're watching it with an adult, you can tell an adult or you can jot it down on a piece of paper if you're watching this on your own. I would like you to tell me what is an adverb. Okay, so pause this video now and you'll be able to write down the answer before I reveal it. Okay, so an adverb then. It is, it describes a verb, an adjective or another adverb. It tells us how, where, when, how much and with what frequency something is happening or has happened. Okay, so to get our brains working, I want you to describe a room in your house or garden or if you're at school, your classroom. Okay, I'm going to put blue, I think. You can write bullet points with your descriptions. So I'm going to describe um, a room in my house. Okay, so... 
I'm just going to actually, I'm not going to write bullet points, but you can just write bullet points if you just want to get some um, ideas down. Okay, so I'm going to write a little bit, just a short paragraph, okay, of what a room in my house. So, sat upon the, oops, upon the mantelpiece. Okay, so that's the, um, the surrounding part of the fireplace. And that's also my fronted adverbial, the small round clock ticked away as the rest of the room was covered in silence. Okay, so yes there is a clock okay but i didn't just put the clock ticked loudly okay i use a fronted adverbial it's sat up on the mantelpiece it's on the mantelpiece okay um the rest of the room was covered in silence okay so that's really using some imagery in your writing that's a really good skill to have okay then let's continue the fresh the fresh sweet scent of Brightly coloured flowers filled the room as the black and white cat began to stretch out. Okay, so those of you who who, who are in turtles. You will know that I have got a black and white cat called Minnie and she is most likely be always in the lounge in the front room, in the living room and she's mostly asleep. So she's just stretching out. So I wonder what time of morning it could be or evening perhaps. Okay, my last sentence then. Outside of the window, comma, fronted verb you'll use there, the crisp breeze was blowing swiftly as the beautiful sun began to rise there we go okay so you can see i've described my room in three sentences and in those three sentences i have used fronted verbials i have used two a sentences I have used an adverb in here to just to tell me um, that the flowers were brightly coloured. Okay. I have used, what else have I used? Um, verbs, adverbs, I've used F-U-L ending. Okay. So your bullet points should be down here if you've, if you've used bullet points to describe your room. So what did you include in your description? Did you just talk about the things on the walls that you could see? Or did you include all of the sounds you can hear and the things you can smell? So when we are describing, it is better to include all the things we sense around us. So remembering our five senses. So we use touch, smell, taste, see and hear. Okay, so just a reminder if you forgot what the five senses are, there you are. Okay. So what makes a good description? So all the senses described, so those senses that we've just spoke about, describe more than just the things you can see. So in mine, I described the sound that I could hear, the ticking of the clock, okay? I described the smell of the, of the brightly coloured flowers, all right? You've got to use lots of exciting adjectives. So for example, it isn't just a tree. It is a tall, strong oak tree. Yeah, that is much more interesting than a tree. No boring words or phrases. So let's link into this bullet point up here. The room is warm. Okay, bit of a boring sentence that is. The temperature crept up around the children. So actually creating that imagery in your head again of the temperature getting hotter and hotter. Interesting similes. So similes are saying that something is like something else. So... The class smelt like an old gym sock. Mm, nice. And then lastly, exciting sentence openers. 
don't always use the or a. Okay, so for example, steaming wet coats hung in the cloakroom. All right, instead of saying the coats hung in the cloakroom, steaming wet coats hung in the cloakroom. Right then, so this is your task for today. And I'm going to give a, um, a starter of this of this descriptive piece of writing and it's up to you whether you want to magpie it or not okay but it's just to give you an idea of what we expect from you today so i can include exciting adjectives and adverbs similars and interesting phrases the five senses interesting sentence openings and your best handwriting okay so the pictures that we are receiving we need to make sure that is your best handwriting that you can do so remember you are writing a descriptive piece of writing about what happened to Granny and how she felt as she was running away from Lord and Lady Davenport's house. So, off we go. So, Granny slowly lifted her flushed, actually her red flushed, not flushed, flushed face, blocking the brightly... Lit security light from Lord and Lady Davenport's garden. Okay, so the lights, she's just, she's obviously running away from um, Lord and Lady Davenport. She's lifted her head up to see where she's going. As she's lifted her head up, she's blocked that security light, okay? So she can't see anything because she's, her head's blocking the, the light. So let's continue. Oh, actually, I might put not just Lord and Lady Davenport's garden. I might put the garden, okay? Extra information, making it interesting, okay? As she continued to run through the... Blue, gloomy forest, comma. The tall magpie and the ideas that I've just given you as well. The tall, strong oak trees lashed and crashed against each other like drum. Sticks, oops, like drumsticks in the hands of a giant. So that's my simile in there because I've got a like, okay. So the trees lashed together, so it must have been a very, very windy night for the trees to keep swaying and hitting each other, All right? Before long, another fronted adverbial, Granny started to slow down. As the ground became even more uneven, so it was harder to run on, due to the knobbly roots. But there was no stopping those irate hounds. They were getting closer and closer okay then so let's highlight the features that we found in there so adverbs we'll go in um go through the sentences so granny slowly lifted her red oops i've put read there see another reason why you should always read back through your work Red flushed face. Okay, so you've got two A sentence there. Blocking the brightly, another adverb. Lit security. So it wasn't just a, an any light, it was a security light. And it wasn't just a garden, it was the back garden. As she continued to run through the dark, gloomy forest, another two A sentence. The tall, so this is your ad these are your adjectives here, strong oak trees lashed and crashed against each other like there's your simile drumsticks in the hands of a giant before long your fronted adverbial granny started to slow down as the ground became even more uneven 
due to the knobbly roots, but there was no stopping those irate hounds. See if anybody can tell me what irate means. They were getting closer and closer. Okay, so that leaves you at a perfect part for you to continue. Okay, so if we look back at what um, we've done so far, I've included exciting adjectives and adverbs. I've included similes. I think I've included some interesting phrases as well. I've included some of the five sentences. I've included some interesting sentence openers. I can't show you my handwriting because I'm typing, but I know that you will all use fantastic handwriting. Okay, can't wait to read all of your descriptive pieces of writing. If you have any questions or if you are stuck, please email myself or Mr. Grocott and we are more than happy to help you. Have a great day. Bye.